ancient Bharat to modern India. Education has always occupied a place of prominence in Indian culture and tradition. Nalanda, Taxila, and Vikramshila, the world famous centers for learning, were the epitome of such education and attracted students from the remotest corners of the planet. Ancient India has given the world wisdom, yoga, Ayurveda, and classical art forms. And today, CEC, Consortium for Educational Communication, has stepped forth to build a digital learning environment to emulate the ancient Indian education system to provide quality enriched educational resources integrated with human values and culture on digital platforms to the remotest learners. CEC was established in the year 1993 as a pioneer of digital education in the country to address the issues related to higher education. CEC is the national coordinator for SWAM MOOCs and 11 SWAM Prabha PTA channels to address higher education needs through digital media to take education to the remotest level. CEC has its 21 Educational Multimedia Research Centers, EMRCs, spread across the length and breadth of the country, with more than 400 trained workforce, state-of-the-art equipment and infrastructure. Besides owning the largest digital educational content repository in Asia, CEC has more than 16,000 videos spread across 74 subjects, approximately 24,000 e-courseware modules, over 19,000 short learning objects, more than 8,000 live and recorded lectures, 1,022 massive open online courses on the SWAM platform. CEC has created e-courseware modules based on the UGC model curriculum, moving towards CBCS compliance, developed by Pan-India subject experts and validated and certified through a two-stage peer review process. It is a complete learning package containing question banks with MCQs and assignments, providing instant assessment of learning outcome. It can be accessed free of cost. CEC has developed approximately 24,000 e-content courseware in 87 undergraduate subjects, covering four knowledge streams, art, culture, language and literature, social sciences, natural and applied sciences, and management and other professional courses. CEC's YouTube channel has recorded a footfall of over 5.6 lakh subscribers with more than 4 crore video views equivalent to 400 years of watch time, with top 5 viewing countries across the globe being India, Pakistan, USA, Nepal and UK. CEC's digital content can be integrated with traditional pedagogy through blended and flipped learning, short learning objects to teach concepts, portable e-content, video on demand through CEC web portal, subject-based content provided locally through LAN. CEC's undergraduate and postgraduate MOOCs are hosted and accredited by various educational institutions pan India. India has the second largest higher education system in the world. However, our higher education system has its own share of challenges like low gross enrollment ratio GER of 27.1% in higher education sector, scarcity of faculty, infrastructure and facilities, redundancy in teaching practices, various socio-economic and geographic barriers, high cost of higher education, learning habits and abilities, universities in production mode, lack of opportunities to pursue interests. Here, CEC has the capacity to address these challenges by carrying out online content activities which include designing, development and dissemination of digital educational content, running of e-courses, 
and conducting proctored online examinations through National Testing Agency, NTA. So far, CEC has issued 36,143 course credit certificates in partnership with SWAM and various host universities for SWAM MOOCs examination. Further, CEC has begun developing educational content in 12 regional languages to increase the accessibility and reach of its online learning resources to the rural populace of India. Moreover, to create ICT-based learning environment in the country, CEC's Prakriti Documentary and Film Festival has gone international. The festival aims at creating awareness and sensitizing people about issues like environment, development, the human rights, and the Swachh Bharat. This event receives overwhelming entries from participants across the world, and CEC organizes its edu and edu right competition annually since 2018 on themes of digital education. Every year, the educational video competition is organized by CEC, which converges students, filmmakers, and experts from all over India. At CEC, we empower people with the power of knowledge. Namaskar, thank you, Dhanavad. It is a great honor and privilege for me to come here. Uh, I am a son of the soil. I belong to this place. I uh, was born here. I studied here. So it always gives extra happiness to come here. And uh, uh, I am great privilege and honored. Professor Padi has given me this uh, opportunity. Uh, uh, respected VC Madam, Professor Savita Acharya, and uh, Professor, all the dignitaries of the dais. Uh, I am no expert on culture. You see, I am a simple bureaucrat. I have been handling, I have been working in the Ministry of Culture because for the last uh, three, four years, I was Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Culture. Before that, I was in Law and Justice. I was director in Ministry of Defense. I was uh, deputy secretary in UPSC, so I don't have any expertise on culture. But yes, I know that I have been handling this portfolio, and uh, for Azadi Kamrit Mahostar, I have been working at the agriculture. So, because as we know, uh, culture is uh, uh, it is everywhere. Uh, it is a way of life. The food we eat, the dress we wear, the language we speak, everything, it is, everything is culture. So in Ministry of Culture, we have a broadly divided tangible culture and intangible culture. So tangible culture, like we have got all these ASI monuments, the state-owned monuments, all these, uh, we have got uh, hundreds of museums in, uh, under Ministry of Culture. We have got a uh, large number of libraries and uh, we have got a uh, number of institutions like uh, Asiatic Society, there is Anthropological Society, all are under Ministry of Culture. And uh, uh, 3,500 monuments, including 32 World Heritage Sites are also looked after by Ministry of Culture. And uh, intangible culture, that is the music, the, all these things which are all. And again, we also divide it visual culture, there's uh, performing arts and visual arts. Okay, and there is another classification also, that is uh, classical art, classical dance, we are doing folk art, folk culture. Because we have got Sangeet Natak Academy in Delhi. And there are three premier institutions under the Ministry of Culture, Sangeet Natak Academy, Learning Kala Academy, and Science Academy. They were all established in the early 50s. And similarly, all state governments have these three institutions. They are supposed to be independent and autonomous to encourage and promote the Indian culture, as well as the local culture. We have got zonal cultural centers. There are seven zonal cultural centers. 
the zonal cultural centers mainly they focus on folk culture, local culture. So today is a great occasion. Dr. Hare Krishna Mahatab, the founder of modern Orissa, was born on this day. Uh, as a student of history, I remember I have heard many times in speeches the way he participated in non cooperation movement, civil disobedience movement, Quit India movement. He was Chief Minister of Orissa in 1946 to 50, then 1970s. He was arrested during the emergency period and the newspaper he started, Prajatantra. Prajatantra played a stellar role in the dissemination of, uh, in the making of modern Odisha. Uh, and we know what happened during emergency and what was the role of media, the censorship. Uh, Indian Express and the Statesman, they took up the challenge, they brought out blank editorials. The next day when the emergency was announced, Times of India and uh, Times. They totally told the government line, whatever as I remember vividly as students, uh, those were very difficult days uh, when emergency was declared and the media was totally made a subservient to the state. Uh, and uh, Dr. Hare Krishna Mahatma was arrested during emergency. So those were the days. And the book he wrote, The History of Orissa, it is a magnum of us. The, we have so many historians have written about Orissa. Uh, another classical work which has a direct linkage to the Orissa culture is uh, Jagannath cult and state formation in Orissa. So, I would recommend everybody should read this classic book. He says that like uh, Puri Gajapati, he is called the agent of God on earth. He has the Lord Jagannath, he does the Chela Pahara, he sweeps the floor with golden broom. There is the Badadanda, there is the Mausima Mandira, all because of all these things. Puri Gajapati has higher status, godly status. So, all the princely states of Odisha, they copied Puri. They also started Ratha Yatra. And after a generation and two, their status also got developed. This is called competitive politics. Because of this competitive politics, state was formed. What we see today in the modern Odisha, it was formed because of this competitive politics. So, culture, religion, they are directly interlinked with state, with the politics, with our lives. So, so interesting about this Jagannath cult and the state formation, because they say that Odisha has the best example of integration model. What is integration? You see the culture, Professor uh, Savita is, is an expert in anthropology, I am not an un, uh, un expert. But uh, what I can say with my limited knowledge, you see the, the Hindu tradition, the great tradition, it assimilates the small tradition. When it expands the tribal traditions, the lesser traditions. But in Orissa it didn't happen. Because the tribal population was so big in number, when the great Hindu Brahmanical tradition started expanding, they could not assimilate. So, all the tribal features, all the tribal lives, they were preserved. So, they say that Jagannath, in his incomplete form, these are all tribal features. So, that is the beauty of Orissa, that is the beauty of culture, that is the beauty of integration model. So, coming back to media and culture, they are uh, directly interlinked and uh, media does the role of a mirror, sometimes it does more than mirror. 
it has a great role for uh, to educate to literate the masses imagine the pan indian sari it has it has now become a fashion status symbol it has gone beyond all india it has gone beyond asia think about the bindi the indian women put on their foot for it it has become a status symbol and it has become a fashion symbol so media does this and what all these ott platform sitting in your drawing room you learn you see you come to know about what is happening in latin america what is happening what is the culture what is the society in turkey what is in western europe what is in south america so these are the great things and i would just little bit discuss about the azadi ka amrit mahotsav because this idea was mooted by honorable prime minister uh two years back so we have got a <coughs> sale in ministry of culture it is called the commemoration sale so this is the mandate of the commemoration sale to celebrate all the events like 200 years of pipe rebellion in orissa it was celebrated 150 years of birth of mahatma gandhi uh 550 birth anniversary of guru nanak dev these are some of the big events we did recently uh so azadi ka amrit mahotsav the main key there are five pillars the major pillar is freedom struggle so under freedom struggle we have to celebrate about our unsung heroes everybody knows about gandhi ji sardar patel jawaharlal nehru but there are hundreds thousands of millions of unsung heroes we should celebrate their sacrifices and we should remember and commemorate them then our honorable finance minister she suggested to create a digital district repository digital district repository it is basically all the districts of the country we have got at present 770 districts all the 770 districts they have contributed to freedom struggle so we have to document this freedom struggle and there are four parts one is personality of course you know about personality in each district there are personalities those who contributed in freedom struggle then we have got uh, uh, hidden treasures hidden treasures are the monuments the memorials the statues their parental house where they are born the jails which they spent time in freedom fighters these are all hidden treasures then living traditions and art forms living traditions and art forms like our uh, writers authors poets of freedom struggle painters of freedom struggle this is the living traditions and art forms we have to celebrate like have you heard the name of upendra maharathi Upendra Maharathi was born in Puri. Okay, he was a student of Santi Niketan. Uh, he was a contemporary of Nandlal Bose. He has uh, painted masterpieces about uh, Gandhi. He has compared Gandhi ji with Jesus Christ and Gautam Buddha. Like Gandhi, he was killed. He gave his life for the nation. So also. Jesus Christ and Buddha also for telling the truth. So we have to celebrate these things. There is another interesting thing also I must tell you because we initiated a campaign that the children from the school should write to the prime minister on two things. One is on some heroes of their locality. Second is India of their dream. India become hundred in two zero four seven. 
What kind of India you want to see? One crore twenty-five lakh postcards are there. ये फर्जी नहीं है यू सी ये जो मार्केटिंग होता है फर्जी घर में बैठ के वो बना लेते हैं मार्केटिंग सर्वे लेकिन ये हार्ड कोर है ये भुवनेश्वर उड़ीसा से भी टेन लाख बच्चे लिखे हैं पोस्टर सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल दिन पोस्टर सर ही देखे सो वेन वी डीड अनालिस ऑफ दिस पोस्टर इंटरेस्टिंग फ्रेंड्स कम आउट state wise trends 10 trends then there are top national trends what are the trends what our children want to see when india become 100 2047 like women empowerment corruption okay untouchability these are the some of the things technology so Trends they vary from state to state, but there is a major undercurrent that India will not be the same India which we had. Imagine the last seventy-five years, how much we have travelled. The journey it was very difficult, very challenging. We didn't have wherewithal to provide our people. There was poverty, there was famine, there was a crop failure, and. We have overcome most of the problems, most of the problems, and uh, it is about the people, the character, the resilience that has brought us so far. So I don't want to just waste your time. I want this sixth national media conclave to grant success. Professor Pari. It is in safe hands. He is a kind yogi, I must say, because my last uh, six months uh, interaction with him, he is a very emotional and a very passionate person. Whatever he does, he does with full commitment and knowing fully well in Delhi, the government of India, very difficult to meet someone to get the approval, to get the support, the resources. But he never loses a heart, and uh, I wish him all success, and I wish this media conference all the best. Thank you.